Hey, welcome back. It's part two of the electric snowmobile build. Uh, it's a beautiful day up here in the north. We got a bunch of snow. So um, today we're going to be figuring out how to fit the motor into the machine. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out. So I'll show you what I'm working with. So this is a 3000 watt brushless DC motor. It runs off a 72 volt battery. Current 45 amps and the rated speed is 4900 RPM. Um, it's got three leads coming from it. This is the speed controller. Has the same ratings, nominal voltage 72, 50 amp current, 3000 watt. The motor and the speed controller I bought as a kit just on Amazon. And the reason I chose it for this project basically because I had it already. Uh, so this motor I used in a previous project where I converted an outboard motor for a boat to use this motor. And it worked really great for that project. We've used it for two summers in a row. We've gone on tons of adventures with it. It's really pretty reliable, you know, it's not anything super powered or high speed or heavy duty, but it works. And so I had to do a few modifications when I first got it, changed these wires because the wires that came on this motor were pretty undersized. And actually the first time I took it out, for an extended run, uh, they started melting. The wires are melting. Wires are melting. So, definitely with that much current going through, you need some thick wires, so I thickened these ones. And while I had it opened up, I also drilled all these holes out on the case. So, when I bought this motor, it came with these little indentations on it, but they weren't holes, they were just little dents. Uh, they only went in halfway through the material, so I actually just went with a drill press and drilled out every single hole to allow some heat to escape from there. So this copper coil you see around it um, is something I made to attempt to cool the motor. Um, and so when I ran this in the electric boat, I actually just had a small 12 volt pump pumping water out of the lake into one end and it would run the water around the motor and spit it out the end. Uh, just like a regular outboard gas engine, you use water cooling. It seemed to work pretty well. I pretty much would just switch it on when the motor got too hot and it cooled it down pretty quickly. I also keep a little temperature sensor just stuck on the top of it and I run that back to um, a little display that I can see to tell me the temp. So this was all in attempt to manage the heat of this motor because that's the one thing is during extended run times it does get pretty hot. So this is my 72 volt battery bank and I basically just bought this toolbox at a hardware store because it fit the batteries pretty perfectly. The batteries that I use are sealed AGM 612 volt batteries which gives me 72 volts. Uh, they're wired in series. And I just built in this little uh, switch key. So if I want to shut off the batteries, I just switch this key off and remove it. And that disconnects the entire system. And it also keeps your batteries locked so that you need this key to start the system. So all I got to do is connect this to this and connect this to this. Somehow this will connect to this. This will fit up here and then this fits on top of that. It's a tight fit but you get the idea. Yeah, the chain ring should fit right on there. Run a chain around that. This will turn this. This will turn this. That will turn the track. And that will push the sled forward. Yeah.
Awesome. Well, that's very satisfying. So now that that's there, you can easily get leverage that can start moving the track around. So I'm taking first look at turning the track by using this crank. And the track looks okay at first inspection. Um, but it does seem to be binding up on something. So I suspect it needs to be aligned after having this back corner all smashed in. Um, so I'm going to have to pull out the rear suspension, the bogey wheels, pull the track all the way out. And that will allow me to build my motor mount here as well because I'll be able to get up underneath. And I realize there's another potential location for the motor. And it could be mount right on this frame rail here in front of the chain ring. If I have it pointed this way, this will turn, should turn clockwise. And if I have it pointed that way, it will turn clockwise, but it's facing the other direction. So the different, the two different locations will spin the chain ring in opposite directions. You know what I mean? Well, that about does it for today. Uh, I'm really happy with how this is going. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see the next stage of this project. And thanks for watching.